Hey guys, in this video I'll be covering what are chemical bonds and how are ionic bonds form. So stay tuned. Before we dive into ionic bonds, the first question we need to ask is, what is a chemical bond? chemical bond is formed when there is movement of electrons. Electrons are either transferred or they can be shared among two atoms. So there are two types of bonds. If the electrons are transferred, then an ionic bond is formed. But if the electrons are shared, then a covalent bond is formed. I'm going to be covering covalent bond in another video. Look out for that video. But in this video, I'll be talking about ionic bonds. Now it's important to note that chemical bonds only involve the valence electrons. Valence electrons are electrons in the outermost shell. So the electrons on the inner shells are not involved in bonding. Now we know what chemical bonds are. Then the next question to ask is, why do chemical bonds form? What is the purpose of this movement of electrons? We need to take a short trip back to group 18 elements. If you haven't seen my video on group 18 elements, they're here on the screen. So group 18 elements consists of the inert gases. They're stable elements. The stable elements have electron arrangements that are either the duplet electron arrangement or the octet electron arrangement. So a quick recap here, what the duplet electron arrangement looks like. So helium has the duplet electron arrangement. It has full outer shell, since it only has one shell, the first shell is its outer shell and a full first shell consists of two electrons. So this is called the duplet electron arrangement when there is only a single shell and there are two electrons. And this is a stable configuration. The rest of the noble gases have the octet electron arrangement. So the octet ele electron arrangement consists of eight valence electrons eight electrons in the outermost shell. So this is considered a very stable electron arrangement. So the whole purpose that electrons move about is to achieve this stable configuration. They all want to become stable. Ionic bonds are often formed between metals and non-metals and there is a reason for this. Metals have a tendency to donate electrons. They prefer to give away electrons. If you look at the metals in group one and group two, especially, so they have a valence electron, one valence electron and two valence electrons. And so in order to achieve the electron configuration that is stable, it is easier for them to just give away the electron. Let's look at the example here, look at sodium. So the electron arrangement is like this. The electron configuration of sodium is 281. So it has one valence electron. Remember the stable configuration is either duplet or octet. So here they have, sodium has three shells. In order to become stable, the easiest way is to achieve the octet arrangement. So this is 281, meaning it has one electron in the outermost shell. And so when it gives it away, what forms is the 2,8 electron configuration. So this is an octet electron arrangement and it is stable. So this is the reason why sodium will want to give away its valence electron. Once we give away one electron, we are short of one negative charge, which means we have an excess of one positive charge. And so when you give away one electron, we get a charge of one plus. Let's look at calcium. So calcium has two valence electrons. It has two electrons in the outermost shell. In order to achieve an octet arrangement, electron arrangement, all it has to do is give away the two electrons. So from 2882, when it gives away the two valence electrons, then the electron configuration will become 288. So calcium ion here is 288. Remember calcium is a metal and they form positive ions also known as cations. 
Now, since calcium gave away two electrons, so its charge will be two plus. Let's take a look at non-metals now. Opposite to metals, non-metals have a tendency to accept electrons. Metals tend to donate electrons, non-metals tend to accept electrons. I think you're getting the idea here of why metals and non-metals form ionic bonds. So let's take a look at the non-metal, let's look at oxygen. The electron configuration of oxygen is 2, 6. So it has 6 valence electrons, 6 electrons in the outermost shell. Now the best way to achieve a stable configuration will be to gain two electrons to become an octet electron arrangement. So let's look at this. So the oxygen, all it has to do is gain two electrons. And then its electron configuration will be 2, 8. Now, since it gained electrons, it has an excess of electrons. So since it gained two electrons, its charge will be 2 minus. Remember, negative ions are also called n-ions. So non-metals will gain electrons to form n-ions. Let's take a look at chlorine. Chlorine's electron configuration is 287. And so here, the nearest to achieve the octet configuration will be to receive one electron. That is why chlorine accepts one electron and then it will have a, a configuration of 288. So the chloride ion has an octet configuration, electron arrangement, and the charge is minus one because it has accepted one electron. So now we have metals that form positive ions, cations, and then we have non-metals that form negative ions, anions. And so there will be an electrostatic force of attraction between the positive ion and the negative ion. And this is what is known as the ionic bond. Once we have ionic bond between two elements, then we have an ionic compound. And so we represent the ionic compound in what we call a dot and cross diagram. A dot and cross diagram shows the electron configuration of an ionic compound. This is only the configuration of the formula unit. In a dot and cross diagram, the electrons are represented as dots and crosses. The reason we use two different types of representation is to differentiate the source of the electrons. So for, in, for example, in this diagram, the electrons from sodium are represented as dots, whereas the electrons from chlorine are represented as crosses. This is why we use a dot and cross diagram. So for example, let's look at this sodium and chlorine. In a reaction between sodium and chlorine, the metal will donate electrons to the non-metals to form the ionic compound. So sodium is the metal and chlorine is the non-metal. So sodium will donate the electron. When sodium donates electron, something else has, has to accept it. It cannot just donate it with no recipient. So here, chlorine will take the electron. So when sodium donates the electron, it has 2, 8 electron configuration. And then when chlorine accepts the electron, it has an electron configuration of 2, 8, 8. So now both have the octet electron configuration and both form ions. Since sodium lost an electron, it forms a positive ion. The metal forms the positive ion. And then chlorine has accepted an electron, so it forms the negative ion. And then since we have the positive and negative ion, they will both have an ionic bond. They will form an ionic bond. And so the ionic compound here is sodium chloride. Let's look at a more complicated example. So let's look at sodium and oxygen. Here is the same thing. The metal will donate the electron to form the octet arrangement and the non-metal will accept the electron to form octet arrangement as well. But here, oxygen is 2,6. It needs to accept two more electrons in order to form the octet arrangement. However, sodium only needs to donate one electron. So the solution here is, since oxygen needs two, there needs to be two sodium atoms 
that will donate two electrons in total, one electron each. And so sodium will lose one electron, both the sodiums will lose one electron, oxygen will gain two electrons, and all of them will have the octet electron arrangement here. And oxygen will form oxide ion, sodium will form the sodium ion. Now remember the total charge of an ionic compound, of all compounds, must be zero. The total charge of a compound is zero. So here we have two minus and we have 1 plus, 1 plus. So 2 plus and 2 minus gives us 0. Can you guess how many electrons aluminium would have to donate to form an octet or duplet arrangement? Try to work it out and comment the answer below. So that's it for today guys. This is all about ionic compounds. Next we'll be looking at covalent compounds. As usual, if you've learned something, please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. See you in the next video.